Um, so yeah, like, um, like Adam said, my name is Daniel Cohen. I work here in San Francisco uh, for 50 Cubes. Uh, we are a company that makes uh, primarily social games targeted towards women. Yeah, so that, that could be a whole other talk right there, but uh, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm, what I'm here to talk about is uh, we just made this game uh, called Fashion Tale. It's, uh, it's in the App Store right now. Uh, so, you know, go make me some money, um, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, it was, uh, why it's interesting to you guys is uh, that it was developed in jQuery. Uh, the front end is entirely in jQuery and HTML5. And uh, it took us about eight months or so to put together. And so, I'm going to kind of just talk about what worked and what didn't, and uh, some of the lessons we learned, and, um, you know, the kind of the difference, uh, because the difference between doing a so you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, Kirk as, <laughs> as the iPad turns up. Um, <laughs> so just kind of the difference between, uh, you know, like uh, web application uh, development, which I did previously, and then uh, the, mobile, uh, the mobile game development, which I, I, I do now. Uh, so, um, right. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just quickly show you what the game looks like. Hopefully it'll load. Um, Going to take kind of a minute. This is not the version that's on the that's on the App Store right now, um, so it's kind of like my development version. Uh, so, like I said, this is uh, it's uh, targeted towards women, so it's about fashion. That's good stuff, right? Yeah, I feel comfortable. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so right. So this is oh, come back. Um, <laughs> it's more for my anger than yours, I'm sure. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is the daily update modal, right? Uh, this is probably where the whole business side mostly um, mimics what the game is doing. Like you have this sort of feed over here, so you can see what other people are doing. Uh, you know, you have like the coins you get and that sort of thing. So um, on the next page here, it's a similar thing. You can challenge your friends. Uh, the game is actually a, a hidden object game, which I'll, I'll show you the board here in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to show you these pages because I do talk about them in, uh, in a little bit. So, uh, woo, play screen, exciting. Um, so I did want to put the sound on. Right, okay, just so you can see it. Uh, so yeah, we got this, uh, you know, oh man, come on, come on. <laughs> it's also the name of the iPad. Okay, cool. So I'll try to hold it up here. This is the first time I'm trying to give a talk with an iPad. It's pretty fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have this episode selection screen. This is probably pretty normal. You've seen this before. There's a lot of little transitions and stuff like that happening. Um, I don't know why I have to look up here. It's right here. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, if I press play, then it comes to this sort of star screen like you've probably seen in, in your Angry Birds and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to play this uh, challenge three, and we come to a loading screen. This guy is uh, also all in CSS. Whoa, music change. Oh, so seamless. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so that's it. Like I said, it's a hidden object game. Uh, you find stuff that you see in the bottom, and then it goes into your little inventory. It's pretty simple, right? I know how to play really well. Uh, <laughs> so, um, right. So also while we're here, if you notice when I drag around, you got this cool little parallax, cool little parallax effect. So yeah, that was a month in the making. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so <laughs> once you found all of the objects, then you drag them back up um, onto the top. Ooh, ooh, yeah, exciting. <laughs> so, um, oh, not so good. So <laughs> uh, yeah. So then, when we follow that one, then we're done with the board. Scene complete. Woo! So yeah, you see it's, uh, oh, thank you, yeah. So yeah, these are my two favorite effects, was the star and then, well, this cutscene, by the way, was done in Edge, uh, the new Adobe Flash option. So it's possible, it is. Uh, <laughs> you can do it. Um, so yeah. Um, that's it, and then you get the leaderboard and you can continue or whatever. Uh, so that's the game, um, basically in a nutshell. Yeah, thanks. 
so yeah, this was done. The front end was coded entirely by like two people, me and uh, one other guy, uh, Mark Missy, and it took about, like I said, about eight months uh, to do. Um, so let's get back to the presentation and talk a bit more about it. Oh, the music's gone. It was really relaxing. Uh, <laughs> So um, when you're coding a game for the iPad as opposed to you know, anything else, um, uh, if, if you do it in HTML5, simplicity is really fine. Uh, you can concentrate on just having something that's short and you can replay. Um, the reason why is that you know, mobile devices, people don't play for very long. There's really no reason to commit yourself to being like, I need half an hour of you know, gameplay every time they're on a bus. I mean, like, it just doesn't happen. Uh, so yeah. Um, so that's why, for example, that board you see is really short, and that's kind of repeated all the way through. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the structure and what worked and why that you know, sort of helped uh, coming up here. Uh, so the good part about HTML5, why if anybody's like, hey, build me a game, uh, you know, and they're like, I want native, um, you can be, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of advantages actually to HTML5, uh, not least of which is for Apple, you can change stuff without resubmitting. Uh, and waiting a week while you're just like, please go through, please go through. And they're like, you forgot a variable, ah. And you're like, oh. you know, um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's happened, it has. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, uh, you can change things on the fly like that and uh, kind of sneak it through their approval process. So yeah, don't use it for you know, anything bad, but. Um <laughs> so yeah, um, if you're designing the game as from the technical standpoint, um, not like the game design, uh, portion, but just from the technical point, just keep these bottom three things in mind. Uh, you're going to need to share it, you know, virality is so important. So for us, we're using uh, Game Center and Facebook, um, and that should be in your mind like right after, hey, I've got an idea for a game, blank Facebook, right, you know, <laughs> on Facebook. It should be very early. Um, plan for ads because you're going to want to pay for it at some point, even if you're like, no, that's lame. Um, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're still like, oh, I want a house, you know, so like, <laughs> you know, just, just to plan for it. So, you know, it's, it'll be in there. And then also plan for stats. Um, you know, like unit testing is one of those things that I hate to do. And uh, getting stats is also one that I'm like, oh, really? But like, yeah, every click that they make, how long it takes them to do things, how many stars they got, did they find those shoes or whatever, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> it's all got to be in there because uh, you can, it's no good to be able to update the levels if you don't really know why. And uh, the complaints are never really a r real good indication of anything that's happening in any of your apps because, you know, <laughs> there's just always one person who's really, really loud who doesn't know which direction left is, you know, on the screen and you're like, oh, you know, and you're like, oh, maybe we have to redefine left. Um, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so this is the basic structure of what we were doing, and this is, I feel kind of bad because like, I was learning a lot today about you know, uh, how to do stuff uh, the right way, um, and there's a, lot <laughs> there's a lot of things that we had to kind of do to make it work uh, well on the iPad 1 and iPad 2, and later the iPad 3. Oh, and that showed up, the iPad 3. That was a good day. Yeah, we were really excited. Um, <laughs> it was. It was better than RoboCop, you know. Like, <laughs> just super happy. Um, so this is the basic structure. The index, uh, the index.html you only see uh, in between. It's that blue screen that says loading. Everything else is in iframe. Uh, so that was really confusing when we uh, proposed uh, doing that because people were like, an iframe? I thought this was cutting edge. You know, but <laughs> you know, I did that in middle school. What are you thinking? Uh, but <laughs> there's, uh, there's some very good reasons why uh, we ended up doing it, not least of which was the iPad 1. Um, so basically, the, the main reason is, uh, this goes back to like the difference between a, a business application and a game. Uh, with a business application, you kind of, uh, in my experience anyway, uh, you, you kind of, you, you may have a lot of records and stuff like that, but you're kind of going between three views and sort of changing stuff and moving stuff and, you know, like it's all, but it's all the same stuff, you know, for the, for the most part. Um, you know, uh, but in a game, you know, like you get far enough in a level and like 300 goblins attack, you know, and like, <laughs> and like, so like there's a lot of stuff that happens and it's kind of all, it's kind of all variable. And so the main reason for the, this iframe, uh, this iframe version was because of um, garbage collection. Uh, I know there's a lot of people, I talked to a lot of people about it while we were having problems with the iPad one, you know, after a certain number of levels, it would just crash and that's really depressing. Um, <laughs> it's just like, what did I do? Um, what do we do, guys? Come on. Um, so the, the solution that we came up with was this iPad uh, solution, which is basically like you put all your 
garbage in the iPad, and then you sort of just like, when you're done, you just like nuke it from space, you know, because like, <laughs> and it's gone, you get all your memory back. And it was like the only efficient way, you know, to really get rid of stuff consistently. Um, it was, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I mean, like no matter how much of a Nazi you are with garbage collection, or well, as much of a garbage collector you are, I suppose, <laughs> uh, you know, like it's still, there's still always some that's left. And uh, with, with the repetition that you get in gaming of constantly like making the game board and then taking it away and making it again because they died, you know, and that sort of thing. That's a, it's a, it's a weird, um, it's a weird sort of edge case for the HTML5 that it's um, not always that great at. Um, so that's why we set it up that way. Um, yeah, okay, I think I'm doing okay on time. Um, okay, so now about the game board in specific. That was pretty cool, right? There was the parallaxing stuff. Um, I think we're the, we're the only uh, hidden object game that I've seen at all where you can find stuff on those multiple layers like that. Um, so that's pretty good, even if you know the game style is not really your cup of tea. Um, you know, <laughs> I was looking around today and I was like, yeah, I, maybe there's a couple of people in the room who are like, oh yeah, that game is freaking sweet. Uh, <laughs> so like I said, it's in the app store now and you can just go down there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, how that worked, this is the actual canvas element. Oh, oh, I think I'm okay. I'll just be careful. Oh, that's a good idea. Sorry. Well, oh. <laughs> Well, technical difficulties aside. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, this is good. I was worried that I didn't have enough material. So. <laughs> it was. Uh, so now I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, <laughs> right back on track. Um, no? Really? Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, back to Khan. No? There he is. Okay. Ah. Here we are. So the game board, uh, this is the actual canvas portion. So like if you're, if you're really into HTML5, you know that uh, when that canvas thing came out, you're like, yes. You know, uh, particularly if you programmed in Flash before that. And we still have that at our company. Uh, like I said, uh, we, we're social games, so there are a lot of Flash developers. And they see canvas and they say, oh good, the canvas, now I feel comfortable. That's my touch point, here I am. You know, no, don't think like that. Just don't. <laughs> it's not like that at all. It's like a PNG with like function calls. Um, <laughs> and that's all it is, you know. <laughs> And uh, so yeah, that's a big like change, you know, like everything that is dynamic about that, uh, you know, like the moving side to side, that's, uh, you know, that's all done with WebKit transforms. And then there were animations, if you notice, like the, the water spout on the fountain and stuff like that. That's done with divs on top of it uh, that are just changing the background position through a sprite sheet. So like, don't try to make the canvas like do acrobatics because it won't. It's just, you know, it will laugh at you and that's sad. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's that part. Let's see, anything else on this that I needed? Yeah, and then there was the drag events that were going up also. Um, so like I said, that it's all WebKit transform, so you just had to pull the transform out of the, you know, uh, out of the WebKit transform using JavaScript to get the offset for where you're clicking and everything like that. So like I said, it took a little bit of time, um, but I think the, you know, the end is smooth enough so that it's not, people aren't like, aha, that's HTML5, I can tell because it's slow. Um, <laughs> okay, so like I said, we use the iframes for views. Um, very important uh, difference. We tried originally to do uh, just the one web page, um, or the, you know, the one web page version. That would have been great for PhoneGap, you know, but obviously it just, it just didn't work. Um, what we have is a super minimal HTML skeleton uh, in all of those pages. So like, I mean, some of them originally were just like, it's, People were like, can you send me the, you know, that's a cool HTML page, can you send it to me? I was like, do you want the source? And they're like, no, just the page. And so it's just like, HTML, body, empty. That's it, you know? <laughs> so you wanted load times to be fast enough. So like everything's just written with the JavaScript on the fly uh, when it comes up. So that was like, like I showed you with the feeds and everything like that, but even some of those modals and stuff like that, all of that has to be uh, dynamically made. And you'd be really surprised actually how few images are actually in the game uh, because the CSS as opposed to just like a PNG or a canvas is, is just a lot faster. So uh, yeah, so we have the Ajax calls uh, to, uh, to our server for the game state, like what's, uh, what has the user accomplished so far? You know, where is their, you know, how many levels and what's their scores and stuff like that. 
And then um, also for the message feeds, we pull from, you know, right now it's just from one place, but we've tested it with uh, other stuff, <laughs> like Facebook posts and stuff like that, um, which is good. And then the purchasing options, which again is really, really good. If you're pulling your purchasing options from the server, then you can change them. They're too expensive or not expensive enough. I mean, obviously we just make it cheaper. Um, you know, for you, the customer. Uh, <laughs> um, kidding. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And so we didn't use PhoneGap. We have an in house wrapper. Uh, we have some people who are very good at Objective C, so we have that luxury. Uh, also, we have the content team. Um, so, when I show you like the demo that you guys get to see, you can laugh at how bad uh, the art is for that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very similar to PhoneGap. Uh, it's just set up uh, just slightly different so that we can handle the, you know, like the iframe calls and store a lot of stuff in the wrapper um, because that wrapper storage and the Ajax calls turned out to be just much faster than using the, the HTML5 um, local storage. Um, yeah, so a lot of this was to also because like, you know, Apple needs, uh, wants you to run on the iPad one. And so a lot of times we were like testing on like this guy. Oh no. Why do I touch it? I thought I learned. <laughs> I'm so proud. Okay, so, right. You know, I was testing on this guy, and then you go back to the iPad 1, and you're like, why? Why, why is it broken? Um, this is pretty good. This is a good reason to bring tape. Um, <laughs> some duct tape would really be nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, where are we? Okay, so, oh, this is what I'm talking about. So yeah, beyond, the, beyond just the front end, the HTML5 stuff that I mostly worked on, like I said, there was a wrapper uh, that was built to just kind of hold all the data, uh, and you know, which is really handy for offline play. And uh, then the, the database connection, uh, which was not written in Node, but probably should have been at some point, because you know, that would have looked better on the resume. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, let me talk just a little bit more now about the difference between the, the DOM elements and the canvas. Like I said, don't treat the canvas like that's your, your magic out, you know, like animating stuff on it and stuff like that. Just don't, don't think that way. Don't. Just don't. Um, <laughs> so uh, the iPad has some great advantages if you're just targeting that first. Um, because, for example, yeah, there's only one CSS prefix. You know, cool. You know, like I, like I said, I worked on the, those major... Um, business apps and stuff like that. And that browser fragmentation, I hadn't heard that term before. And then like flash forward a week of me like jumping out of a window like, why I uh, <laughs> Why does it exist? You know, all of that. <laughs> I don't understand. And I had worked for Microsoft before and that totally like changed me. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, if you're if you're targeting the iPad first, obviously you may have to go back and change it later. But like just having the one, uh, the one prefix is really important for the things like the WebKit transitions and stuff like that. Because unfortunately, jQuery Animate uh, is not going to get you there right now. And like that other person had mentioned, I tried that you know that library to uh, make uh, just switch over from jQuery Animate into uh, using WebKit transitions, and it's not going to work. Um, so I'll I'll show you some of the things that kind of um, uh, helped in that area. Uh, so that's it. DOM elements, move them around. They're much easier than uh, trying to move stuff on the canvas. And you can really do a lot with them. I mean, once you get into uh, that CSS stuff, you'd be surprised. Um, repeating calls on the canvas is actually super fast. I don't know if you noticed, but when I drag stuff up onto the screen, um, like it faded you know, into that rainbow colory kind of stuff. And uh, that worked pretty well. That was like 20 draw calls onto the canvas, but it's only the one image repeated on top of itself. So yeah, that works. Um, so good, if you want to do that. Um, that's right. And then the other advantage to doing everything in CSS and not, say, in the canvas is that CSS re resizes really well to different resolutions, uh, obviously. That's what it's for. Uh, so yeah, like the when the iPad 3 showed up on our doorstep, and we were like, yay. And other people looked at what they were doing, and they are like, oh, shh shoot, you know, <laughs> like, you know, and then we looked at what we had done, which was mostly in CSS, and we're like, wow, it's still really crisp, and it looks really, you know, right. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what you want from your HTML5 app, you know, like, is that confidence that it'll move from screen to screen into screen and uh, still look nice. So, yeah. Uh, so now to the HTML5. Um, I have a really bad-looking demo. <laughs> so uh, I went to go see my, yeah, ooh, look at the ugly. I went to go see my mom up in Minnesota uh, a week before last, oh, I'm from Minnesota. Oh, how does he hide the accent? Uh, <laughs> um, 
So uh, yeah, you know, if you have a mom from Minnesota, then you're probably going to go to an Indian casino. Um, <laughs> so we did, and so instead of doing the demo that I was going to do last weekend, I did this one for you guys. Um, so it's on it's on GitHub, and so you'll have the link. So you notice that flip is really fast, you know, no problem. Even on the iPad one, that'll be fine. So all the WebKit transforms are, are hardware accelerated, so you get a lot from that. Uh, this is all like dynamically generated, uh, you know, selection screen. Oh, and this has got to go the other way. Can you flip orientation? Okay. Wow, and it stayed plugged in. So yeah, this is um, this is just a quick example of like a of a slot machine guy, right? You know. So um, again, everything's moving around with uh, with the WebKit transforms. So you'll notice. Um, is that a phone? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you'll notice if I, uh, in, the, in the URL up there, uh, it's actually two different web pages. Um, if I was doing this exactly like Fashion Tale, there would be one web page and these would both just be iframes. Um, but you kind of you get the idea this way. Um, so the CSS here, there's no, there are no images except for the, you know, like the, those little guys on the bottom and you know, the, um, uh, the planets obviously are kind of images, um, but there's a lot going on. All the movement, all of everything else is just is just with CSS. If you look very carefully, I don't I don't know if you can see, but this, there's stars behind uh, you know the planets that are all moving uh, independently, just with um, multiple background position. So again, if you're programming for the iPad, you get to use all of these like cutting edge CSS3 things, you know that people tweet about, uh, and then you're like, when can I use that? You know like. <laughs> I need to support, you know, I, whatever, or, <laughs> or uh, yeah. So, um, so that's the cool part about that. And so again, you can kind of look at that to see some of the things I'm talking about uh, at that point. So let's look at um, all of that a little bit more in detail. So, whoa, it's hot, kind of hot. Um, <laughs> So the CSS, this is, you know, this was the big thing. I, you know, like, it's different, again, working in a more professional apps. What, what makes you feel like you're doing your job really well there is, like, after months and months of preparing and, you know, your client looks at it and just says, hmm, that's okay. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm going to treat myself to steak. Um, <laughs> you know, but, like, if, you, if you're in gaming, what makes you feel like you've had a good day at the office is, like, uh, you do something and somebody goes, whoa. You're like, yeah, now I get a paycheck. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and that comes from the CSS more, more often than not when you have uh, HTML5 stuff. Um, so some interesting things, again, like there were curved paths. If you notice like the stars exploding, those, that stuff that came out of it, um, those were curved paths where the element doesn't move. Um, you know, that's, um, I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Um, some of the bad points, on the other hand, are uh, opacity and box shadow for whatever reason. Uh, for whatever reason, all of the you know all of the Apple tablets are really bad at that. All of the iPad versions. Um, so yeah, you can shrink things down to nothing. You know you can move them really fast around the screen. You know you can spin them around in 3D space. But if you try to make it slightly you know see through, it's like <laughs> can't. Um, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, same thing with box shadow. I mean like it's so common to be using it uh, that you kind of forget uh, sometimes because it makes everything look so good. Um, but if you can avoid if you can avoid animating it is, you know, is the only problem. Don't, you can have it on the page, just don't animate anything. Don't animate it and don't animate anything over it because it's that same opacity problem. Um, use web, WebKit transforms first, top and left. Again, as, you know, like ever since I've been programming uh, for, in CSS, I'm like, that's how you move stuff. Um, but now it's not. Uh, <laughs> in my brain now, you know, it goes to transforms first, um, which is great because it's, uh, it's more versatile, and there's also like a 3D element to it, which you can like pull off uh, pretty easily, and you can scale it. And you know, if you if you know how to do all those matrix matrices and whatnot, you know, dig in. Um, <laughs> that's all. That's all available to you. And the the last one on this is that the pseudo elements was another thing that I've really gotten comfortable with over the course of this. Both of those guys standing on the skip button, uh, those aren't DOM elements. Those are just you know pseudo elements on the on the skip button. Um, it doesn't add any extra space because, uh, again, we were running into the problem of having, uh, you know, just too many DOM elements. So this is how you do curved paths uh, in CSS. It's, uh, I can show you just a quick example here of another game that I was working on. Uh, this one? No, this one? 
So check this out. Like these are a bunch. These were originally password dots. Um, I don't think they are anymore. Um, but I was working on a game that's like bees that fight each other. And so, um, yeah, these are, this is the swarm, right? Um, so you can see this is all done in you know, uh, all done basically in CSS. Just when the CSS ends, you know, it starts a new one uh, to give it those those different curves. So I gotta speed this up. I thought I was you know all of this fiddling around with a cord. Uh, the events. So like you saw with that, uh, you know, the bees there. Uh, you can bind in jQuery, just bind, you know, WebKit animation end or WebKit transition end. And just in general, I think it's probably a good idea to start using those whenever possible. Um, they, they're just so much, they were just so much more convenient. And I think with the, the things that are coming out in jQuery, they'll probably just start using them anyway. Um, but for now, it's not, it doesn't hurt to, you know, get used to it. Um, the second one here is click and touch start. Um, this is, there's a huge difference between the two. If you click on the iPad, if you bind to click, it waits like 800 milliseconds before doing anything, um, which is usually fine if you're, you know, like on just a, you know, like a normal mobile app or whatever, but on a game, that could just like kill the whole experience because you're like, die, die, oh, wait 800 milliseconds, you know. <laughs> you're just, you're so surprised. So. Um, we're using a mix of them because like for buttons, uh, people like to see the button move down before something happens, so you can just add an active state uh, in CSS and voila, you know, it goes down. But for like things that need to respond quickly, touch it and then there you go. Uh, another thing that we found out uh, that worked really well is this uh, uh, e.original event uh, when you bind to things uh, like touch start. So this will give you on, this will give you, you know, like the touch, uh, the array of actual touches uh, when you're on the iPad, um, which is so important for like that dragging and that sort of thing, because it's uh, there. Are, there are so many great libraries that I wish I knew about like six months ago. Uh, you know, Hammer.js, that's fantastic. Um, so you can, but if you wanted to, you know, do it yourself for whatever reason, because there, especially with games, there's a lot of like weird edge cases that you have to uh, program for. So it's good to know that stuff. Um, and then like on orientation change was another one um, that we don't use anymore. But uh, when I figured out that I could do that, that was pretty cool. Um, so for now, now a little bit of jQuery finally, since we're at that conference. Um, <laughs> so uh, I use this uh, plugin building, like they said, you know, like it's a great, uh, it's great to know how to do it. And uh, I use it mostly for like building, uh, for building DOM elements and stuff like that, like m make the social buttons and stuff like that. So it'll just kind of like, ask what social networks are available and build the appropriate buttons uh, on purpose. And then I can just chain that into one big append uh, call and that's good. Um, the other one that really came in handy was uh, dot data, which I didn't even know about. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed. Uh, <laughs> I'm ashamed to say I didn't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's so great like with the uh, with those feeds and stuff like that, you, if you want to challenge somebody, you can just put all of the data you know, into the button and it'll just hold on to it in case they click it and that's just, you know, so easy. And the code looks so clean. So that made me happy. Uh, and that's it. And then, like I said, put it in an iframe, use it and toss it, you know. They're, they're really old technologies. Uh, so you might as well treat them like Kleenex, right? I mean, like, just, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's totally good. Okay, so, um, but in HTML5, I mean, the big mission obviously is to try to uh, make it run on every screen, uh, you know. So with WebKit, obviously, we found it very easy to move, uh, you know, pretty easy to move at least to the phone, the the iPhone, and um, uh, that sort of thing. And Android, we were really s pleasantly surprised when we we're like, let's see if it runs on my phone. It does, uh, you know. It does, guys. Wow, you know. So that was very happy day. Also, um, <laughs> so. Uh, the only difference there is that we did, ha uh, we should have thought more about responsive design uh, originally, um, just so that it would change to the right sizes. More, for the most part it did, but there was still a lot of stuff that had to change. Um, and then the big gap, uh, especially for this kind of stuff that's really sensitive, where you're transferring a lot of sensitive data, um, not only things like are they paying, uh, which obviously is probably the big one, but you know, in games it's also just like what did they score? Uh, it's very dangerous because like on the desktop you can just right click and you know, take Gandalf's life right off, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know. So that's um, that's still kind of a problem. People are really good at uh, that. They're probably all in this room. Um, <laughs> now that I think about it, so um, yeah, uh, that's that's still a problem that you know we're kind of facing. 
Um, for the next stuff that, you know, like now that we've done this first example when it works and it's making money, um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, the next stuff, you know, this was what's been uh, sort of inspire, inspiring me recently. I don't know what I was thinking with this slide exactly, but yeah, this is the next stuff I want to learn. So if anybody wants to do a project, you know, hey, um, I'm right here. Uh, so yeah, and then I'm wrapping it down now. So <laughs> I wanted to just thank uh, you know the community who has helped so much. JS Fiddle is fantastic. Uh, I wish that uh, jQuery was just selected by default uh, instead of MooTools. You guys use J JS Fiddle? Yeah, it's so good, right? Yeah, I would say yeah, I would say boo them for the MooTools, but boo sounds like moo, and so. Uh, <laughs> it might get confusing. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of CSS3 generators, which uh, not only save time, but um, also just you know taught me a lot uh, through that stuff. Stack Overflow, obviously. Um, now if you see me on there, you can read what I write in my accent, so thanks. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of people I follow on Twitter, um, so you can follow me. I've only got eight people right now, so that's sad. Uh, yeah. And the jQuery team has also been pretty helpful. Um, so yeah, that was my uh, sort of Oscar bit. Um, <laughs> so okay, good. So in summary, uh, keep uh, keep the scope really, really simple. Um, th there's no there's no shame in it. You know, like a lot of game designers are like, or game developers are like, I want it to be awesome, and you know, like it'll change the world and stuff like that. And you're like, why not make tic tac toe? Um, <laughs> you know, just try it out. It's really no problem. It's a it's a good learning experience. It really is. Uh, if you if you get the chance, and it's a good reason to use PhoneGap and that sort of thing. Uh, so if you are a game designer, you know, you pretty much do the same thing every time. Find a little psychological problem in humanity and exploit. Um, <laughs> so that's good. Um, disposable iframes, I know that I probably, if anything is gonna get me in trouble, it's this thought, but you know, it just worked, it worked so well for what we were doing. Um, you know, just occasionally throw it away, pop up an ad, or whatever, you know. <laughs> it, it really did just work fantastically. Uh, draw with the DOM, the, con the canvas is not as much of your friend as, you know, people try to tell you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, move stuff around. Uh, save data in data. Um, you know that should be fine, but I didn't know, so maybe I'm helping someone. Um, that's it. And don't favor a single technique. The the biggest thing with all of this is that like uh, the CSS transforms instead of using animate was a big change. The data was a big change. There's a lot of things that just changed, you know, and a lot of things that changed depending on what iframe I was in, you know. So it's like you have to. It, it, People say HTML5, you know, is not ready for games yet, uh, you know, and they're right. Except, uh, you know, we're making money. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the the big thing is that don't become too concentrated on specific uh, specific ways of doing stuff. You have to. It's a, like I said, it's a great learning experience because you're not sharpening just one blade uh, when you go at it, you know. So that's that. Um, that's it. Oh, good on time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Hey.